We can now bring in Richard Juragosian, Director at the Regional Study Centre in Yerevan. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24 today. Uh, you heard there from uh, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky speaking from Grenada. Is there a risk that the conflict in Ukraine, the ongoing war, could essentially dominate the agenda in Grenada today? This has concerns grow, concerns in Europe grow that uh, U.S. funding to Ukraine could potentially run dry. Well, yes, it's already a concern, unfortunately. We also see this as a test of Western resolve and commitment. But frankly, I'm more concerned about the missed opportunity where Azerbaijan's boycott of this security summit is dangerously timely and significant. I want to talk about that next because, of course, we have many um, problems in, in Ukraine, not just what's the ongoing Russian invasion uh, of Ukraine, um, in Europe, rather. Uh, we've recently seen an exodus of over 100,000 ethnic Armenians go from uh, Nagorno-Karabakh into Armenia. European leaders gathered here today were hoping to use the occasion to bring Azerbaijan and Armenia in the same room. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Turkey is also a no-show, a backer of Baku. Uh, can European leaders resolve anything when it comes to Nagorno-Karabakh without our Azerbaijan present? For two reasons, no. First is there's nothing to resolve anymore. The forced displacement of the Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh, unfortunately, represents a period that it's too little too late for the West to engage. Having said that, I do think the recent visit to Armenia of the French foreign minister was an important contribution to regional security. But this is a missed opportunity diplomatically. And more specifically, Azerbaijan's boycott is aligning itself more with Moscow and Turkey against the West, not in not in cooperation with the West. There have been increasing calls uh, for sanctions for European leaders to, to stand up to Azerbaijan, but European leaders are backed into a corner, aren't they, given that uh, there's this growing reliance on Azerbaijan for energy? I actually disagree, Delano, because what we see is a dangerous precedent. Azerbaijan seems to have vindicated and validated the use of force. That's a very dangerous precedent that undermines Western values. And secondly, this gas deal between Azerbaijan and the European Union is disingenuous at best, accounting for a marginal uh, volume of gas for Europe and essentially representing a swap agreement where Azerbaijan re-exports Russian gas to the European Union. But how was, you mentioned the use of force. Azerbaijan was able to, to inflict so much damage in the span of 24 hours. Well, actually, this is no surprise. Unfortunately, it's the latest in a mounting escalation that included over nine months of a virtual siege of the enclave Nagorno-Karabakh. But I would also argue the war of 2020 never finished, never ended for Azerbaijan. And the latest military assault is the culmination and unfortunately the conclusion of this reliance on force and military attempts to resolve essentially a diplomatic conflict. Richard, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the program today. That was Richard Jerigosian joining us there from Yerevan.